Hi, everyone. I'm Winnie C., your host for today's webinar, Budget Control. The presenter is Ross Cutler, Senior Relationship Manager for AFMA Wealth Management and Trust. We have about 30 minutes of slides in this presentation. Should you have any questions, please email us at wealthmanagement at AFMA.com. This monthly webinar series is brought to you by AFMA Wealth Management and Trust. We are AFMA's trust company. AFMA stands for American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association and is the longest standing not-for-profit association that empowers military families with affordable financial solutions. We accomplish this by being the premier provider of financial planning investment management, and trust services for the military not-for-profit. Also, as a trust company, we have an additional legal obligation to act as your fiduciary, which means we only act in your best interest and for your benefit. Here's an important disclaimer. This presentation is educational. It is for general information only, and it's not specific investment, legal, or tax advice for any of you individually. Do not rely on this presentation alone to guide your financial planning decision. Since each individual situation is unique, your needs for financial services will differ. For individual, for individual advice, please contact us directly. We produce this webinar series in-house with our own professional staff as a service to our members and to help them better understand the resources that are available to them. I will now turn it over to Ross to go over the agenda and start the presentation. All right. Thank you, Winnie, for that great introduction. Here's our agenda today, budget control. Why are we talking about this? Well, we have the holidays coming up. Everyone likes to splurge a little bit in the holidays, whether it's buying the Thanksgiving turkey, going crazy on the Thanksgiving meal, or it's the holiday season when we start to think about gifts, buying things for friends, for our family, for our kids. Stores actually encourage us to spend more. They have payment plans so we can spend more. Should we be spending more? And that's really where the budget comes into play. So today we're going to talk a little bit about understanding your budget, controlling your budget, and continually making it work. And here's our agenda. Why is it important to have a budget? Let's get back to the basics. A few techniques to help you with your budget, and then using it. Helping you plan not just your budget, but the rest of your financial landscape. So why are we talking about this today? In life, it's, nat it's natural to procrastinate. We often talk about the importance of financial planning in these webinar series. People focus on their jobs, their careers. Maybe they're focusing on a mission or an upcoming project. We often forget to look in the mirror and plan for ourselves. So controlling your budget is the foundation of your financial future. And there are certain things in life that will be permanent for long periods of time. For me, that's a horrible golf game. But for others, it could be a five-year car loan. It could be a 30-year mortgage. Maybe it's dental insurance, medical insurance, college savings. For a lot of us, these costs and expenses exist every day and every month. So if you want to control your financial destiny, we need to understand our income, and then we need to understand our expenses. When we think about the budget, we can also think about investments. Why do we have an, a, budge, a budget? What are we investing for? How much should I save? How much do I need at retirement? How much can I spend in retirement? When can I retire? How much can I leave my kids? All of these questions really come down to 
your personal or family budget. How much should I save? Really a subjective question, but we really need to know how much do you make and how much do you spend? If you spend nothing, well then you don't really need to save anything. Likely most people are not in that situation, so the answer really comes from going back and looking at how much you spend, and then we can develop the right savings plan and the right investment strategies to meet your goals. How much do you need at retirement? Retirement for everyone looks different. Are you gonna work during retirement? Are you gonna travel during retirement? So we need to estimate the income and we need to estimate your expenses, also known as your budget, for your retirement years and then focus on the right retirement strategy. How much can I spend in retirement? We hear this question so often during our financial plan. After we set up a budget and we run through a few scenarios and everything looks good, people become a little bit more optimistic. They start to change their perspective a little bit. The question shifts from, how does my budget look now, to what can I change my budget to before it becomes a problem? So you see a positive change. How much can I spend during retirement? When can I retire? Again, it comes back to what is the picture now? looking at your income, looking at your expenses, and then what does that picture look like moving forward? What are the changes that are gonna happen if you retire? What's that retirement picture? How much can I leave my kids? We get this question often too. Everyone wants to plan for their kids. But this really relates back to how much do I need at retirement? We run through all the estimates, we talk through the end of life estimates, we run through the scenarios, and then we look at it and we say, are you happy with this estimate? These are the scenarios. Are you happy with that? This is what it looks like at the end. Do you want more? Do you want less? Does that look about right? And then how do we make changes to improve that? Or spend a little bit more if you want. There's going to be moments in your life when you're making big changes. Job change. Career change. Transitioning out of the military. These are changes that can lead to a number of questions and concerns. And oftentimes, the one question we get so often here, probably because our parent company, AFMA, is a life insurance company, is how much life insurance do I need? Is that something I have in my budget? Can you help me review my life insurance? And as people think about a career change or a job change, they start to think about that life insurance. SGLI may be ending. Your company group policy could be changing. Common questions, hey Ross, do I need life insurance? How much do I need? Listen to that, how much do I need? How do we determine how much life insurance you need? Well, we start with your budget. What is your estimated income? What are your estimated expenses? What happens to that situation if you pass away? It establishes the baseline for looking at life insurance. Now there's gonna be additional factors that come into play, but the budget is really where we start, and it's really how we begin to answer that question. Do you still need life insurance? As people hit retirement, they often think about, should I terminate this life insurance policy? Should I cash out that policy if it has a cash value? The same process still applies. Do you have any liabilities being protected or covered by that life insurance today? What happens to those liabilities if you pass away? What do your expenses look like if you pass away? My brother calls me every few years. He has a policy with Northwest Mutual. That policy has a, a rider in that, that allows him to purchase additional amounts of insurance. So he calls and he always asks me, should I increase my insurance? And every time I walk through the same questions with them, why did you buy life insurance? What type of lifestyle do you have now? What, what type of lifestyle do you want for your family should something happen to you? What can they afford under your current life insurance today? And what would be changed by adding additional life insurance? So answering these questions comes back to that individual or that family budget and their cash flow and considering the impacts that can happen over our life and change that situation. So what is the definition of a budget? It's an estimate of income and expenditure for a set period of time. Notice how it says 
estimate. A lot of people look at a budget as black and white, as ironclad, can't be changed. That's not true. It's there as a guideline. It's there to give you direction. I like to call the budget a pulse check. Art Lyons, our chief invest, investment officer here, likes to think of it as a speedometer. How fast are we going? So if you set a budget to spend $80,000 this year, and you look at your budget in March, and you spend almost $40,000, then we know we may be going a little fast. Do we need to make an adjustment? That adjustment could be changing our lifestyle or it could be changing our budget. A lot of people take the easy road and change the budget, but is that the right change? It's harder to make a lifestyle change, but it may be necessary. Now we used to have checkbooks. I think we still have them. They're just not used as often. One of the first things I learned going into high school was how to balance a checkbook routinely, and you have a ledger of expenses. This helps people set and maintain a budget. We set an estimated monthly budget. Let's just say it's $500. And as we write checks, we see that amount going down. So we are actively monitoring our budget. If we go over, now hopefully the check doesn't bounce, but we can take a look at our budget and we can say, why did we go over? Will that continue to happen? How do we make a change? Do we change our lifestyle or do we change the budget? And today, more commonly, you see credit cards. Credit cards are very easy. I think everyone gets an offer in the mail every day from a credit card. But it's swipe and done. You don't even think about balancing your account. You know the credit card can hold a little balance. So you're comfortable building expenses and settling in at the end of each month when that bill comes in. What can happen during the holidays is we keep swiping that credit card. We're not tracking the expenses. We lose track of our budget. We get sucked into the holiday season. And we have a great holiday season. Then the bill comes in January and we realize, whoa, we're in a little bit of a hole. So we need to focus on getting out of that hole. So we need to change our lifestyle or we need to review our budget. So if we're gonna use a credit card over the holidays, try and keep track of your expenses. Watch each expense as they go on the credit card. Make frequent payments on the credit card so you see the money leaving your account and paying off the credit card bill. This will help you realize and think about the purchases you're making in a more meaningful manner. Now, there's also a ton of websites out there. Up on this slide, we have a few of diff different websites that can help you with your budget. Mint and Quicken probably being the two names we hear about the most and are, are brought up most often. They have very friendly platforms and can help you build a budget from scratch. Mint and other apps have notifications when you're spending too much. They also notify you when bills are coming up and payments are due. Banks today, they're incorporating more tools and services on their platforms. They're there to help you provide a little bit of guidance and assistance as you manage your bank account. So I would take a look at the different options available. Take a look at your bank, see what they have. If you wanna do a free trial with, with one of the softwares here on this slide or anything else out there, I mean, there are a number of budget tools out there. You can go into Google search and search for other platforms and test them out. See which one you think is best for you. See which one you like. The right budget solution or the right budget software service may not always be the one with all the bells and whistles. It's just the one you're gonna use. Find the one you like using. Simple and stupid is often the best solution. Microsoft Excel, another great solution. Microsoft Excel has become a solution for almost anything that touches a number today. Over the years, Excel can just do about just about anything. It's a calculator. It's a savings plan. It can create lists and categories for you. It can generate invoices and it can create budgets. You can create your own budget template. They also provide some. You can see on this slide that I went into their pre-built templates and pulled a few. Simple monthly budget, simple personal budget, basic personal budget. Take a look at these Excel budgets. See if you like using one of them. See if they're simple. See if they help you. These are great tools that we can use every day. 
And the great thing about Excel is it's fairly universal. It'll work on any computer from just about anywhere. So you can easily share this with your family and make updates. It's just another source, another tool that you have to help you with your budget. So how do we incorporate the budget into our planning? Most people spend a significant amount of their, of their life working, focusing on their income. Oftentimes we don't spend a lot of time thinking about our expenses. Not that we don't consider it, but oftentimes the solution is more income. So focusing on both can have the greatest impact on planning. When we start financial plans here at AFMA Wealth Management and Trust, we start with your cash flow. We review your income. That could be a 1099. You could be a W-2 employee. It could come from dividends. Maybe it's rental income. We make sure we have every source of income coming into your life. Once we have all of the income, we can then move into all of your expenses. And it can be long. It could be a mortgage, car purchases, college savings, health care, dental insurance, life insurance, homeowners insurance, auto insurance. And then the entertainment, going out to dinner, vacation, Starbucks, taking care of the family, grocery stores. The list can go on and on. The more details that you can provide into your life, the more accurately you can make changes and monitor your budget. Understanding your income, understanding your expenses will help define some of your lifestyle and make a budget easier to follow. A financial plan is like having a financial physical. It reviews every aspect of your financial situation. It's going to give you the guidance and assistance to achieving your goals and objectives. Understanding your budget is the lifeblood of that plan. Now we understand everyone is different. One person may like Starbucks. One person may like Dunkin' Donuts. One person may like that soy caramel macchiato, extra espresso, whipped cream, caramel flakes on the top. The other person may just want black coffee. Buying that drink doesn't really matter. Buying that drink 30 times and understanding what happens if you buy that drink 30 times can matter. If you buy a drink, maybe you're not saving for retirement. If you buy that drink 30 times, maybe you're sacrificed saving. Maybe you sacrifice college savings. There are few people in this world that get to have their cake and eat it too. The rest of us need a pulse check, and that's the budget. We often hear live within your means. In the business world, we often hear control costs. In the government, just look at the news today. We are constantly hearing about budget cuts, about sequester. So budget control plays a part of every business. It plays a part of our, the government. It plays a part of everyone's personal lives. It's there. Making sure you have the right budget, understanding your budget, and adjusting your budget accordingly can provide the right solutions to a lot of other financial strategies in your life. It can help with savings. It can help with retirement. It can help with insurance solutions. And it can help with the investment strategies. So our chief investment officer here, Art Lyons, again, always says, our financial success depends upon our partner. Everyone needs the right partner to help talk through our thoughts, our concerns, questions, fears. And that partner can be a friend. It can be a spouse. It can be a brother, sister, parent. It can also be a financial advisor. And it may be Apple Wealth Management and Trust. So if you want to talk a little bit more about your financial landscape, please reach out to us. Our team helps military families every day with their financial situations getting them on track, keeping them focused on their goals. Our financial planning process will help you develop a budget and it'll walk through the impacts that can change that budget and how is that going to change your personal situation. Maybe you're all set with your budget. Maybe you're at the end of retirement and you're looking at how do I manage the nest egg that I have left. 
What's the rest of your financial picture look like? Maybe you're entering retirement and you, you feel comfortable with the budget you have now, but you just kind of want to get a grasp on how do I make and use the investments that I have now work best for me and effectively. The portfolio review gets that conversation started. And we're going to give you some guidance on your current situation. And we can give you some recommended changes. It's just another look at your financial picture to give you a little bit of guidance and see if you like the conversation we start here. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Keep in mind that the websites that we provided in this presentation are external websites. They're not maintained here at Affluent Wealth Management and Trust. They're just intended to be helpful resources. We recommend you consult with a trusted professional, attorney, accountant, financial advisor prior to making any decisions. If you need anything else from us, please reach out to us. You have my information here. You have the relationship manager information on the previous slide. So we're happy to work with anyone that needs any guidance on their budget or any other financial concerns. But thank you for having us. And Winnie, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Ross. Um, as Ross mentioned, if you have any questions regarding any of the materials Ross covered, please reach out to us at wealthmanagement at asthma.com. Um, also, take note of Ross's direct contact information on your screen. We'll break here for now, but if you can, but you can reach us whenever you need to. Please do not hesitate to ask for help. You can also sign up for future webinars or review past webinars at asthma.com slash webinars. If you found this information useful, please share it with your friends and family. Our membership grows stronger every year because you introduced your friends to asthma. We hope you join us again on November 30th for our next webinar presented by our colleagues at Asthma Mortgage Services. Thank you and have a great day.